Hey, you guys. I'm Ashley. And I'm Liz. And this is the Besties in the Books podcast. Welcome, Welcome. in. Welcome over. Ooh. Hello, hello. The water's oh. warm. Jump on in. Yes. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's summer over here. Kind oh, of, yeah. Kind of, sort of. Um, so, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> today, so, today we're going to be talking about uh, Touch of Golden Madness. Um, Mm -hmm. by K.L. DeVore. Um, So this is our second uh, follow-up episode to our favorite tropes. Um, This is the Mm -hmm. book that Ashley picked for me to read. Um, Yeah, and so basically she picked this book just to give a brief rundown for anyone who maybe hasn't been following the series or just jumped on. Um, We picked out, we kind of ran down all of our five favorite tropes in books, what we like in Mm -hmm. book boyfriends, etc., and then picked books for each other to read. I had picked uh, picked Book of Azrael for Ashley to read. We went over that previously, um, and mm-hmm. she picked A Touch of Golden Madness for me. So yeah. we're going to be doing a breakdown of that book today. Um, yeah. And just to give you guys like a little heads up, there will be spoilers in this episode, but not for about the first 15-ish minutes, and we will give you a warning before mm-hmm. we start taking a deep dive into this book. Yeah. Yeah. And the warning will be a nice, weird sound that'll come out of nowhere. So you'll know it when you hear it. Yeah, because it will it'll be <laughs> abrupt. It will shock you. It might to make you core. feel a little bit weird, like like last time where you were like, that was But that's weird. how you know you're that's how you know you're in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, if you can hear my husband chainsawing in the background, <laughs> he's chopping some wood. That's just what's happening. Yeah. So it's you know, you know, as you do. As one does, you know, just really getting the vibes, you know, the earthy, you know, wood chopping vibes. Wood chopping or maybe you're listening to this later on in the year when it's Halloween Ooh. and you're just getting some spooky chainsaw noises in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, hey, we'll have to have them do that when we do our Halloween episode. Spooky just like, just chainsaw. run the chains on them. Ah. <laughs> and then somebody going, Ooh, in the background. <laughs> that wasn't the sound for spoilers, guys. It wasn't that. Don't worry. <laughs> We're still spoiler free, in case you're wondering. Yeah, we're just, um, you know, doing what we do. Uh, that's yeah, hilarious. I love it. Line off vibes. So before we get into talking about A Touch of Golden Madness, uh, we just wanted to say thank you for being here, first first of all. Yes, thank you so much for being here, you guys, and taking time out of your day and your book. We know how hard that is to tune, us, tune on into us. And while you're here, make sure to follow and subscribe. That way you don't miss out on future podcast videos, which is at least every Tuesday. And you get some bonus content, too, on Instagram and TikTok yes. at Besties in the Books Podcast. Come find us. We're everywhere. <laughs> We're, hide, uh, we're hiding. We're hiding everywhere. Like we we're hiding. We're in your bookshelves now. Yeah, yeah we're there. Go, go. Just find out what book we're behind. Boop. There we are. We're, we're instead of a hidden door, it's a hidden Ashley or Liz. It's a hidden book bestie. <laughs> Hello. With chainsaw noises. <laughs> <laughs> That's not terrifying at all. <laughs> all right. Good night. <laughs> Have fun with those dreams. <laughs> we're behind your books. Oh, good Man. golly, Miss Molly. So, well. <laughs> all right. Well, why don't we just why don't we just kick it off with a fave and fail of the week? Sounds good. Sounds Let's good. do it. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first this time? Um, let's do what <laughs> feels right, Liz. What feels right? <laughs> I'll just go. How about All that? Right. How about go. I'll just Okay. But if, hey, it sounds like it felt right, so do sure. it. Sure. Yeah, good. Good Great. listening to your gut. Love it. Awesome. Unlike Diana. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. It's a book character. I'm not calling anyone out. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I, people are like, who's Diana, though? That's the thing. Like, they don't know. So if I, those who know, no, no. And that's all you need to know. So there you go. True. There you go. That's all you need to know. I just rhymed so much. It was great. <sighs> okay. So mm. we're just doing a regular fave and fail of the week this week. So no theme, just talking about our week. So yeah. my fail, I'll start with a fail, was... Um, We've been having kind of like, a, it's like homeowner probs. We've talked about doing a fave and fail homeowner, like yeah. adult in the future, which maybe we should do. But yeah, anyways, yeah. so we had like a plumbing issue a while back and it got fixed, but we're looking to do more stuff, whatever. So we have to like hire a new person. And so I had called someone else to come out and check it out to give us like an estimate on it. And, you know, I'm supposed to, like, leave the dogs inside the house and leave the side gate open, whatever, so that this, you know, plumber can, like, come because we're at work all day. 
And yeah. I get a call from the plumber that's like, hey, I'm like at work. I get a call from the plumber that's like, hey, I'm running really behind. Sorry. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. Because literally I did not unlock the gate or put the dogs inside or do anything I was supposed to do because I completely forgot oh. that you were coming. Oh, so, no. yeah, so it was a fail, but it ended up not being that bad because he was running super behind. So basically we were yeah. like, okay, we'll just reschedule. So we ended up rescheduling for today and he came out and it was fine. But I felt like I just, I never forget. I'm like in an appointment business, so I yeah. don't usually forget appointments, but it like just complete, like it was, yeah. on, it was on a Friday. That's like bad. I shouldn't ever schedule anything on a Friday, I feel like. And it was just like, yeah, I literally did not remember it whatsoever until he called me. Yeah. Well, it worked out, luckily. Luckily, he let you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm kind of late. Oh, yeah, well. you don't say. Well, <laughs> I didn't remember you were coming at all. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, <laughs> can't come then. See you later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was, like, apologetic. He was like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot you were coming. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't have even known yeah. until later. Yeah. And then I would have been like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was my yeah. fail of the week. Not a big deal yeah. or anything like that. Happens but just, to the best of us. I just feel yeah. so bad because I'm like, oh my gosh, I, yeah, just could have dropped yeah. the ball. It could have not been good. Um, <laughs> and then my fave is that I actually, like, yesterday was Sunday. I actually, like, took the time out of my day to, like, sit down and, like, make content for my book account, which yeah. I haven't done in, like, months, I feel like. Like, I just yeah. kind of, like, I make some, like, here and there when I have a second, but, you know, like, or when, like, some, I think of an idea and I just need to get it out of my brain, otherwise it'll drive me crazy. But, yeah. like, I haven't spent the time to just, like, sit down and be like, this is what I want to do. I have, a, I had like, a whole list of ideas. I only got through, you know, like, maybe half of the list, but still, that's, like, better than... Yeah. It has that's been. a lot. Yeah, so yeah. that's exciting because I like it when you, like, make something and you're just like, ooh, I'm excited to, like, share this with everybody. Yeah, totally. So, totally. Yeah, so I was happy about that. Yeah. And you know how we are, like, we tend to crack ourselves up. And so that's how, <laughs> that's how I am. You don't say. <laughs> that's how I am, too. So I'm just, like, making reels today and I'm just laughing. I'm just in my room yeah. by myself, just, like, <laughs> laughing. Oh, I'm so funny. Yeah, so... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I don't, yeah. you know. Check out, hey, check out her Instagram, you guys. This was not a plug. Real life. Well, you know what? We might as well. Hello. Welcome. Bye. You guys like books? Go check out Liz. <laughs> uh, the Real Life Vegan Wife. Go check her out on Instagram. Then you, too, can see her funny, hilarious reels and other things and reviews and all that. It's great stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Hopefully you guys we think love it's it. funny. I, I mean, yeah. you know what? But if you don't, <laughs> I well, still thought it was this, funny. <laughs> this is the most unhinged part of our book life so if you're listening you know what you signed up for yeah good it's golly true. it's true oh and i did also write a book review for the yeah. for the coven which was like you've the been first... writing a lot lately i feel like not right well, i mean a, one a week is a lot to me i don't know i haven't well i've been like posting book updates but i haven't usually i, I write full reviews and i put them on yeah. goodreads and i haven't been doing that yeah. in a long time and so it felt good to like actually get a long review ironically yeah. for the coven which i didn't really like that well out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey but you got it done i got it done it's good. yeah it was and it's it was good. good i feel accomplished uh -huh. i like it when i feel accomplished at something that i wanted to do not something yeah, that like totally. society makes me do <laughs> or like what yeah. you know what i mean but like yeah it's just for it's just for me that's mm -hmm. it you know that that's nice it's fulfilling it's fulfilling yeah, yeah. it's great creatively fulfilling mm -hmm. and it's great mm -hmm. uh, so what about you what do you got well all right Let's go. So, <laughs> fave and fail. Let's start with our fail because we always like to do that. And <laughs> um, so we went on, my husband took me on a little bit of a, bo uh, a book retreat. I wish. Uh, I'm like, wait, what? No. Imagine. I would have been, there Ashley would be no fail involved. Ashley cheated on oh. me. She's like, she's like <laughs> announcing it on the podcast. With my husband in books. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh i like didn't tell her the whole weekend yeah right oh my gosh never ever what was it would it happen ever no on a work retreat yeah <laughs> not for not for me not for our books that's mm -hmm. to be another time uh, yeah uh, my first mm. book retreat will be with my book my book bestie and my bestie <laughs> and my work bestie you're my book work 
book burp. It sounded like you were trying to do like a southern accent. <laughs> no, I just blended the words together. <laughs> it was a gruel moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no, because you'd be so we're like uh lifelong real life book work besties. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously our first book work retreat would be together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I okay. mean technically our first book retreat is gonna be in February. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went, I was going through like a, like, you know, a slot machine. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like going through all my head, like what the different themes of all of our like upcoming trips are. Yeah. And it finally landed on the right one. Perfect. Because we're doing when we were young and Oogie Boogie Bash in October. But before that, we're going on a cruise. And then we will be at um, Romanticy, Romanticy or something like that. Romanticy Book Con. February or March. In yeah, February. so that's going to be. Yeah, our first book retreat. Mm -hmm. So excited. Yeah, if you're going to Romanticy Book Con in LA, let us know. Let us know. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait to get dressed up. We got to do all the things. I'm mm -hmm. so excited. I know. So anyways, okay, uh, so you're at the work retreat. Okay, so we're at his work retreat, but it's him and his business partners. And, you know, I have to preface this by saying, like, I didn't grow up in high society. <laughs> like, I guess that's the best way to oh put it. Oh, my God. Like, I, I have to interject. I have to interject. <laughs> Because you get me. You get me. <laughs> so, like, Kanan and I, so my husband and I, are, we're watching The Bear right now, which okay. I feel like... I haven't watched it, but... Everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. unpopular opinion time. I don't get it. I don't understand why everyone's so obsessed with it. It's fine. Like, it's entertaining enough. But, like, I don't... I've never worked in food service. I think that's part of it. So I don't really, like, connect with it at all. It's just kind of like yeah. an all right drama show, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But, you know, part of it is that they talk about... So you said high society. It's like... High society. Yeah. It's like they talk about, <laughs> like, going to... You know, the it's about restaurants. So you're going to these, like, super, yeah. super, like, I don't know, prestigious Michelin-starred restaurants or whatever. And they show the behind the scenes of, like, what it takes for, like, a restaurant like that to function. And it's so intense and requires so many moving parts and everyone's so it seems like very you know like on edge and high strong all the time and I just I don't really get it like I'm not trying to diminish from the talent or the skill that it takes to do something like that but it's like I told Kane and I was like I feel like Nick right now right where he goes to that restaurant and he's like <laughs> I need you to tell me which fork yeah. to stab myself with <laughs> Yeah, that's literally yeah. how it makes me feel like yeah. I just I don't can I didn't grow up in high society either. Guys, <laughs> and so yeah. I have a really hard time with it. But anyways, it reminded me of that whole situation. Yeah. And Kanan's like, yeah. trying to explain to me like why this it's place awesome. is so fancy. And I don't know which fork to stab myself. Exactly. With. It's yeah. like, that's all I could think of the whole time I'm watching yeah. this show. I'm like, that's too stressful. Like, I don't want to go eat in such a stressful <laughs> environment. <laughs> Yeah. Why didn't it go to that kind of high society place? I just mean it was like a really expensive, fancy hotel. Yeah. It's like known around here for being like, uh, it's, I don't know if it's prestigious, but it's like one of the top ones. But we're also like a beach community. So it's like how nobody's like fancy walking around, but it's just, it's a nice hotel. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying that is like prefacing it by a very grateful, I'm very thankful. We had a great time. But the fail was, okay, so <laughs> they put us in really nice rooms, beachfront, like literally mm. walk out onto the sand. And we do have, which wasn't a problem, but the valet is right next to our, would be, we're like the first of the rooms okay. in that building. And then his business partner's in the next one. We have like a walkout patio, everything. I have to set the scene because we go out to a nice restaurant the night before we end up going to bed it's like midnight you know we're all going out like for a nice dinner all together to celebrate his work and <laughs> 6 30 in the morning woke up to crazy picketing oh, <laughs> screaming i was curious about horns. this yeah uh, whistles drums everybody has drums. drums and they're just walking in a circle around the ballet not even saying word, just going, ah! What? I'm not even kidding Like, they're you guys. not even chanting? Like, there's no, no chant? No, they're just screaming. And their signs don't even say anything. <laughs> they're just like, like, it's just like, this can't be real life. Like, I thought, oh, okay. Like, listen, I'm not against protesting. I'm not against peaceful protesting. I think you guys, within reason, like, you gotta say what you need to say. But then we find out this is some of the employees at this hotel oh. that has been going on for three weeks and they never told us about. 
because I, to be jarred awake oh at gosh. 6.30 in the morning in a room that is, like, pricey, you know? Yeah. But not even that, but, like, just you didn't give us an option. Like, when you're telling us, oh, you have this room, but just so you know, you're right next to where <laughs> they'll be picketing at 6.30 in the morning. And they were only there for an hour, but it was enough to, I mean, an hour is still a lot to listen to that. Yeah. But, like, you're already awake and, like, freaked out. I thought, great we're in war. War is coming. This is crazy. <laughs> we're also like in the harbor. So one of the business partners thought it was a crazy boat parade going at <laughs> 630 in the morning. Someone thought like there must be a president oh, here. Oh, oh. Like it was just everybody was like, what the heck is happening? Oh my Everybody's gosh. running outside. And it was just the it almost like they took away our like, what is it called? Autonomy yeah. and like letting us know. Like decide for yourself. Like, yeah. put us, there's other nice rooms, too, that could be either equivalent or we could step down. I don't care. I don't want to listen to that. Like, yeah. I literally, this was an adult work retreat away from the kids. Like, I get that for free at home. <laughs> I don't need to pay or my husband's company to do this when it's that. It was, it was insane, you guys. It was crazy. And then <laughs> while Jeff's, like, figuring out, like, what's going on and going to the front desk, I see them slip a note under the door a half an hour into it that said, Sorry, tomorrow morning we'll have possible noise audience uh, uh, ordinate whatever yeah, noise, yeah, yeah. noise disturbance from some of our employees, and um, and it was addressed for the day before. So I was like, that's when we figured out that they knew about this. And yeah. then he's at the front desk that oh yeah we know about. And it's like why just give us the choice because it was yeah. so scary to be jarred awake like yeah, that at six thirty. Totally. Yeah, you're thinking yeah. like is someone gonna like break in? Like what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So it was what super were scary. They, did you figure out like what exactly they were? Yeah, protesting? it was like it was a different. So it's not even a part of that hotel. It's like weird how because like it's the. It's the club. It's like a resort members for the harbor people. It's the owners of that club that they're protesting. But it's like they do the hotel that we're staying at will do like the spa services there and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's not they don't have the ownership over it. It's like a weird thing. But it affects that. It's like right in the middle of these two. So you have the like hotel side and then the club side. So we were in the club side, but you can hear it in the hotel side. Like if you're at the pool, you'd be able to hear it everything. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so they ended up moving us for the next night and we still heard it the next morning and we were like pretty far down but it wasn't enough to be as disturbing as like right there yeah <laughs> you know Yikes. it was crazy so yeah but that guy is like doesn't even live it's just some like random person they don't care yeah you know i'm sorry but they don't yeah, like the only totally. people you're disturbing is people are and that's why i say like i wasn't raised in high school like I don't know, like, that's where, I don't know, They maybe they're protesting the rich. I don't know, but that's not me. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy my one time away from my kids and celebrate their, you know, they started their business from the ground up and they're just celebrating that. So it's like, uh, it was just there. The whole fail of it, though, is that it was just jarring. And what I'm not even upset, they can't control if people are picketing or protesting or whatever, but they can control that they, then we found yeah. out when we were leaving from the valet that they've been doing it for three weeks yeah. every morning. Yeah. So they could have done that. So like we're pretty pissed about that because yeah. you, if you know, it's you know, it's the same thing. Whenever we book a hotel and it says, "Oh, there is construction," like you know, please be aware of yeah, this room. Exactly. And then we can rethink it, you know. And if it's a really good deal, we'll do it anyways. But if it's not, it's not worth our piece, you yeah. know. We'll do something else. And I understand that they're a business and they're trying, but I don't. I don't because you're going to end up having to give us money back anyways, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. It's like just wait for them to complain about it, and it's like God, oh, it's just takes away the excitement of it. But yeah, my okay. fave is still that week weekend, and um, we took like a boat out and stuff out in the ocean in the harbor and everything and it was super chill we got to see dolphins like right there cool. so super fun we got yeah. to see a little buoy covered in sea lions or seals i don't remember which one it was and like it was just super chill and relaxing and good awesome. so you know there was one uh, of the whole weekend it was just that little fail and that was on the hotel's part <laughs> For not yeah. telling us. We could have been avoided. It could have been all been avoided. <laughs> but otherwise, it was a great weekend. So it was a favorite weekend. Especially the boat ride. Super chill. Awesome. So, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess find out Little. from hotels before you book them that nothing's going to happen to jar you awake. Is any is anyone protesting? That's like on your list of questions now to ask <laughs> when you like book a hotel. Yeah. Yeah, that's How crazy. are your employees? Are they disgruntled? <laughs> 
<laughs> Golly. Let us know. Probably. I mean, no, we all are, right? Yeah. All, the, all the employees are disgruntled. But how disgruntled are they? <laughs> and that's that's too. Pay your employees so they don't have to do this. Yeah. Because well. they're probably bleeding money right now for three weeks. They're having to refund people and give them. Oh, and they told us, oh, sorry, we'll give you a free breakfast, though, at the restaurant that's right in front of where they're picking. <laughs> I don't want to eat there. I don't hear that. I'm good. That's funny. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Bring us on in. Sail us back in on that sailboat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will sail us back in. Um, okay. So <laughs> sail us back into shore. Yeah. Um, <sighs> so we're going to be talking about, obviously, you know, as we said before, a touch of golden madness by K.L. DeVore. Um, so first of all, why don't you just tell me really quick, like how you found this read? Because I had never heard of it before. Yeah. So I was trying to find Liz a book based on her favorite book tropes. I don't know why we didn't talk about this, like uh, whether we should pick ones that we've heard of or not. Uh I just kind of went in there doing that because there's other ones I definitely probably would. I really feel like we need to read Hurricane Wars. Mm -hmm, Okay. So I'm just mm going to put that. Mm -hmm. So that's a Kylo Ren almost retelling, right? It's like uh, not retelling uh, fanfic originally. Yeah, that it started off Mm -hmm. as like uh, like Raylo fanfic basically. Yeah, Yeah. there you go. So uh, yeah. And then after the fact, I was like, oh, dang. But... I'm so glad we read this. I found it on TikTok and um, sorry, I don't remember who, but there was several people that I think had read arcs on this oh, okay. and were telling people like, dude, you gotta, and they had listed the tropes. I was like, oh, this seems perfect. So the tropes listed for Liz, let me pull up my phone. Liz's book tropes were enemies to lovers, faded mate, morally gray men, toucher and die vibes, mutual healing, trauma, difficult past, age gap fantasy mm. version. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the tropes I was based off of. The book, li- everybody was like commonly saying about this book that it's enemies to lovers. It was definitely morally gray man, toucher and die. Mutual healing trauma, which is can be difficult to figure out in books. So I wanted to make sure I checked off that box. Mm-hmm. So those were, it's pretty much just those three, but they felt like heavy hitters enough. And the people talking about them were like, oh my gosh, it was amazing. You guys have to check out this book. And from everything I've gathered, this is an indie author. So Mm -hmm. Kale Divorce, self-published. I even went through the book. There's no other publishing company. So it was really cool that I was able to find so many TikToks about it. Yeah. And... And we did it, and we and we're, we're glad to have done it. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay, so I would agree. I feel like obviously it checked all of those boxes. I feel like the trauma healing portion was actually like a really big theme in this book. It was like yeah. it was focused on a lot. So that was cool. What were the two that it didn't touch on? Age gap. Age gap was only like two years, yeah, so it wasn't yeah, age yeah. gap. They were they were both older though. I couldn't figure out what age they were. They were not older. They were like early twenties. Twenties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't focus on that. Like I said, it was more about mutual healing. And then um, the other one was en- uh, faded mates. Oh yeah, yeah. Which 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 I mean we don't know TBD. So yeah, yeah we don't know yet. Yeah. So who knows? But definitely the other ones, enemies to lovers, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. So I would definitely say that it checked a lot of boxes. I really enjoyed it. So I'll just say, you know, we'll get into our, this is still spoiler free. So just our basic star reviews. Who Those are tropes that you'll see anyway. Like <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you yeah. go to Amazon reviews, you go to TikTok, people are going to say what the tropes are. Yeah. I don't feel like that's I don't spoilery. Feel like it's it's spoiler. just knowing what you sign up for. And if you're like me, you'll literally forget it by the time yeah, you same. pick up that book anyway. Same. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I rated it four stars. Um, Mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. Like just, you know, before we get into any other things, I feel like, yeah, you did a really good job picking a read that had a lot of the tropes that I enjoyed. Um, the reason why, yeah, great job. Great job. Mm -hmm. The reason why (laughs) I didn't give it five stars was because of a couple of reasons. One, I found it to be a bit predictable, um, which doesn't bother me. Like I still really enjoyed it, but it, I feel like a five star read is like, you know, it's life changing. It's ripping my soul out, which usually means that it wasn't predictable because I didn't see it coming or, you know, I thought it, I was going to see what was coming and didn't, you know what I mean? It was just, it wasn't that it was fairly predictable in my opinion. I also felt like the spice was really good, but could have been a little bit spicier, like for the type of book that it was. Um, So yeah, I didn't get a five star, but that's okay. Like four stars is still really, really good. I would still recommend it to pretty much anyone who's into fantasy, romanticy specifically. Um, It would even be, I mean, had a lot of world building, which I think is one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it. 
Yeah. I felt like the magic system was really cool and the world building was really well done. And so I don't know that I would necessarily recommend it as like a first choice for someone who's into romance and looking to transition to fantasy. I might go for something a little easier. Yeah, because it was tricky even for me. Yeah. I read a lot of fantasy at this point. Yeah, it was pretty like you had to pay attention. Like you couldn't just like willy nilly kind of go into it or whatever. So I would Mm -hmm. say like if you like fantasy, romanticy specifically, like you'll like this book for sure. I I would think so. Um, Unless there's something specific that, you know, really irks you about it. Um, But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Yeah. What about you? And something and something that we wouldn't normally have thought to read or yeah. found, you know, which was really cool too. Yeah. Sometimes we just, you know, want to get our seat sunk in te- our seat. Our teeth sunk into <laughs> those, you know, viral trending books and it's nice to hear about and be able to read a book that is off our radar. Yeah. So hopefully it's on your guys' radar after this. Yeah, a touch I of hope golden so. madness. Uh, and I got it on Amazon, and they have it on Kindle as well. Yeah, I read so. mine on KU, so I need to buy <laughs> my my trophy copy now. Yeah, yeah. well, my, and I freaking destroyed my copy. Don't look at it. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I took it to the pool, the beach. <laughs> it went everywhere with me. It is very well loved. It'll still be a trophy, though. But um, so my I, – I'm, I think I've – I finished it last night, and hmm. I, I struggled with the star rating. <laughs> That's okay. Why. So yeah. um, because I really – really like it i liked how i how it ended Mm -hmm. and i do want to read the next one Mm -hmm. so just you know there there's a there's you're satisfied but is there's definitely unanswered questions there's definitely a cliffhanger so and i want to read the next one like and i don't know when that's gonna happen yeah so same (laughs) uh, i have to go stalk her and find out because i'm excited to read the next one we put in the work it's so it's one of those i'm gonna go with four stars because there were some things here and there that bugged me which we'll get into in the spoiler portion (laughs) and um um, and it was so it wasn't life changing for me, but a lot. I, I preface this by saying a lot of the series that I read, especially in fantasy, are not going to be four five stars. Sometimes they're four stars, yeah. and then they turn into five stars. Mm-hmm. So as a whole, I liked mm-hmm. more than I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. Like it There's was a couple almost of things. like it could have been five stars, and yeah, once the series is complete, maybe, and we've read them all, it might end up being a five star series. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. It has the potential for that for sure. Yeah, it's like there's some things that could have been resolved that might have been like more, um, you know, heart wrenching for me, and uh, mm. there weren't those moments that I was looking for. But maybe because it was a little bit predictable for us, and not that that's bad, but because they were predictable, it didn't leave me going like, oh no, yeah, you know. But we're also getting it's a multi point of view like storyline so a lot of things aren't a surprise because you know what the other end is feeling and this well, and that and i feel so. like this did an excellent job of creating a world creating a magic system and setting us up with characters that we care about moving forward yeah. because mm-hmm. enough happens to where like you said it's cliffhanger we want to know what's going to happen next and the the characters are built up enough to where if stuff does go down in the next book that mm-hmm. has the potential to be gut wrenching yes. if something bad happens yes. to someone. So I feel yeah. like that's the key is that it it did all those things correctly for a book that is the first one. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. And you have to you guys have to know, in case you missed our last book trope pick, it was Book of Azriel, which we'll talk about this it's two at the end. It has a lot of similar themes and tropes, mm-hmm. but we I think we both gave that one three stars. Mm-hmm. And we're not trying to run and pick up that book. So it kind of tells you writing styles too mm-hmm. and storyline differences that, you know, this one this one hooked us. Like we're ready. Yeah. We want to see what happens with the next one. Yeah. So we'll yeah. talk about, we'll compare them a little bit at the end just to kind of talk yeah. about like, and typically we wouldn't really compare books in that way, but we are because yeah. it's part of this specific like trope series. So yeah. it's relevant. But yeah, so. And because we had such similar like tropes that we liked yeah, too. Exactly. So it ended up being, we accidentally like picked some pretty similar books, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which we didn't realize. Like not, yes and no. 
know. Like, it's hard to say because it's not similar, but it has some similar, like with the tropes, like you said, yeah. similar tropes involved. I would so. say, like, if you read Book of Azrael and loved it, you should definitely read this book. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because you'll probably love it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so um, I, yeah, we'll talk about more that more at the end once we're into spoiler portion. But yeah, yeah. four stars all around. Excited to read the sequel. Mm-hmm. We need to look that up and find out when that's coming out. I feel like I yeah. may have looked it up, but as you said earlier, it's like nowadays I, it just goes in the brain and then <laughs> yeah. flies out into space somewhere. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll have to look yeah. it up again. Um, okay. Yeah. So... I think this is probably a good a good time to let people know we're getting into spoilers. Caca, caca, caca. We were talking about my crazy crows outside, so <laughs> I decided to be the crazy crow. Caca, caca, caca. Get out of here! Spoilers are coming. Winter's coming. Yeah, I was gonna say winter's coming. Yeah, that's funny. I love it. So, all right. I feel like I okay. The only I only had a couple issues with this book. I really only had a couple okay, let's issues with this let's book. Let's see if they're the same. Okay. Okay. The first one was I was confused because okay, and this might just be a me problem. But <laughs> it started it started off from the point of view of Gray, who is our FMC. Mm-hmm. I that's a very androgynous name. So I was confused yeah, who we were talking okay, about. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. That makes me feel yeah. better. All right. It, it like took me the first ten percent, whatever that is, to be like, oh, okay, great. And then and then Griffin is the MMC. Yeah. So the names were too similar and androgynous. Yeah. That it was uh wait, okay, wait. Well in the palace, okay, yeah. So I agree on that one. Yeah. Same. Okay, so Gray the, Griffin. That was a little too close. It was a little too close. And uh, like androgynous names, great. But then maybe uh include a few more indicators in the beginning so that we are aware of who we're talking about. Because yeah, it was a little bit confusing. Um yeah. so uh, that was one issue. Mm-hmm. My other issue, and this is pretty good. I have two, I have like two issues, like other than the fact that it was predictable. So, and that there could have been more spice, but that's not really an yeah. issue because there might be in the next book, you know, whatever. And some people, yeah, some are people looking don't for that. see it coming yeah. and some people don't want the spice. Yeah. So that's very personal. Yeah, yeah, totally. So my, okay, this is my issue. <laughs> I was talking to Rosinda about this. Okay. Listen. I'm excited. <laughs> I commented on it in the Fable chat because I was, like, so put off by it. Okay, so there's this moment where, uh, you know, Chrome, Griffin, whatever you want to call him, where he is fighting someone, and it's, like, super, super intense. It's, like, a really important moment. It's, like, he's being a badass, whatever, and then they describe him as pirouetting away. Oh, I don't remember that. (laughs) (laughs) Like no. this? <laughs> I'm putting that in the visual yeah, aids for yeah. you guys. It was like a mixture of Chandler's dance with a pirouette. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just. Oh, that's a choice. It was a choice. It was a. Ser- oh, wait. I have I have three issues. I lied. Okay. So oh, there's the pirouette. Okay. okay. And that was a big, in my opinion, like, it was a big fail. And, like, there's so many ways you could describe a stealthy, elegant fighter, right? He spun away. He spun away. With daggers out, man. <laughs> I mean, it's pirouetted. What, it was that it, using the thesaurus in the wrong time yeah, situation. It was a, it, to take it back I've already to said friends. spun too many times. Yeah, it was, yeah it take was it back Joey. to Joey writing the letter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, so I definitely I had an issue with that choice because it really <laughs> that pulled specifically, me out. Yeah. That sentence specifically. <laughs> like it haunts me because I feel like I really, really enjoy Griffin Chrome's character. I really like yeah. him a lot. And I was like, I'm sorry, but no. Like just no. Yeah. I, I didn't like it at all. Um, it really, really bugged me. Um, the other okay, this is my other issue. Yeah, I yeah, I figured out what the other one is. <laughs> Guys. Yeah. Dude dude plays the violin. <laughs> <laughs> new ick for Liz. And we found a new ick, which is fair. <laughs> See, gotta find strange, one strangely enough, I feel like if it was like a romance book about like a male uh, ballet dancer, like it wouldn't bother me if he pirouetted in that instance because... It was because it was jarring. It was because it was jarring and he's place. not a dancer. He's literally like, like why a is fighter. He pirouetting why? Why? Yeah, it was just not a good choice. Um, like I said, I don't have anything <laughs> against men who pirouette. Like you have to be so freaking strong. 
wrong to be a ballet dancer. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Listen, I'm not calling anybody out, but that's not I who just he is. Like, it's out of character. Exactly. I feel like it needs to be said. Okay. So then the violin thing. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was like. You had a problem with it for the from the get. <laughs> yeah. I just. So I had to, like, talk myself off the ledge. So this is what I came up with. I was like, all right. I'm picturing him, like. <laughs> playing the violin and I just I can't it doesn't track I can't like reconcile that with his personality so I had to envision him as more of like a gruff Irishman playing like a fiddle Mm -hmm. in a in a pub do you know what I mean like drinking like drinking a whiskey and playing the fiddle which yeah yeah um because that makes but then it less, but then the fiddle music <laughs> makes it less dark <laughs> no, <but yeah. laughs> he's playing he just was always playing devil went down to georgia like everywhere gray's like what is that <laughs> and he's like singing it too and it was like while, man while he's, he's so depressed while he's pirouetting oh yeah <laughs> that's what he's doing as well. Devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. Do, 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 do. Well, you know, he's a troubled soul, is he's just singing about his life. I know. <laughs> but no, that's not what I I'm picturing like um, you know, like PS I love you when she goes to see the band. Yeah. Like that. I think music for you with these big, burly, tough guys, it's hard for you. It's hard for me. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's, because it, it give it's giving like high schooler with a guitar. Yeah, like trying to be cool. Yeah, but I will say you did not have a problem with the piano in. I did um, not. Gothic. I did not. But there's something about. Have you guys seen that one where the guy like he throws his coattails and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's yeah. the one so cool. I it's think like, that's dark and like, but yeah. I think it's because there's like a, disconnect. a piano is like. You can picture like, like Dracula playing the piano, you know, like it's, yeah, it's moody. I feel like a violin, it's moody too, but in a different way. It's funny to know how big and large Griffin Chrome is with violins are tiny. Yeah. So a cello would have been better. However, (laughs) you ain't toting that around. Because, like, a cello is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's similar vibes. Yeah. But the violin, I don't, it's a little thing. I don't feel like that would have fixed it, though. But here's the thing. It's like. Well, it wouldn't have fixed it because how was he carrying that thing around? <laughs> it's like, wait, I got to go get my cello. <laughs> it's Reeling like a big it everywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, stealthy. Okay, well, let's break it down. I'm curious now. Like, what <laughs> instruments would be acceptable? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so we've got... Saxophone? I don't think so. <laughs> sexy saxophone man. Who remembers that? The summer of sexy saxophone man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and my husband were singing that everywhere. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Oh, so good. So, YouTube it if you haven't seen it. I th- Enjoy. I just feel like there's no... Like, you know, I read... That's what I'm saying. I read those two books, uh, like Reverse and Drive or whatever. They're about musicians. You know, one's a drummer. And I think the other guy if I'm remembering right, played the guitar. It's just, that kind of icked me out too. I just, I, you know, yeah. and I really like music a lot. It's just something about, it's just something about a guy playing mu- music. What is that? What is, yeah, am a, I okay? Yeah, a musical instrument. Am I okay? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a very specific ick. It is. That's for sure. But not the piano. But not the piano. Piano is fine. Yeah. Interesting. I think because I don't know. I don't know. I can't psychoanalyze it. I can't it right either. Now. I feel like I need I need like a therapy session you, just for this. Yeah. I mean, I we know what happened to me. I dated a bunch <laughs> of guys who played the guitar and stuff. Yeah. And the violin is guitar adjacent as far as shape goes. <laughs> <laughs> so totally. Totally yeah. the same. Maybe because it's almost forced because it doesn't fit him. Maybe. So it's like a forced um like drama like oh he's so sad he's playing the violin oh, sad violin yeah you like new tiny violin yeah, yeah. like i just yeah maybe I don't like that Mm-mm. i don't know i'm just yeah. so what i had a problem with okay yeah yeah was i felt like especially at the beginning it kind of fizzled out they didn't talk about it much i was panicking because i thought we basically were reading grown-up descendants because of all the different hair colors oh yeah that was a so, little odd I agree. Yeah, so in this world, everybody in there's kinetics and there's elementals with the fantasy. So all the kinetics, now I think I got it down, are 
uh, and elementals. They're born with, uh, you know, fun hair colors, like, you know, orange, like I have orange and they'll have pink and they'll have lime green and they'll be, I, <laughs> so that takes me out of it. Not that I don't love, I do my hair funky colors all the time. So does Liz. Not that I don't love that. I just don't want it. I don't want to think about people's hair colors. You know, it, it takes a it little bit, me out. it was a little bit kitschy. It was kind of like, it was a little kitschy. Yeah. It was try hard a little bit. Yeah. Cause it was just, cause the thing is, it's like, so it was just the kinetics though, that were named after the colors so then so yeah then that that's the what really like nailed the coffin or whatever golly so <laughs> it was that anybody in the kinetic realm that was born they would name them after their hair color not like obvious like blue <laughs> old blue but it'd be like cerulean <laughs> it would be like cerulean yeah, yeah. and that's why Sapphire. gray is called gray it's like wow you're so creative gray yeah like, and then, but then, yeah, yeah, chartreuse and cotton, because his hair is white like cotton. cotton. I just, that cracked me up. I don't know, because I kept on thinking of, um, you know, the two commentators on Dodgeball. Yeah, cotton. yeah, yes, yes. I yes, couldn't exactly. stop thinking about that every time they said Cotton's name. I was like, yeah. oh my God, okay. Uh, so that was throwing me out. So yeah. I just felt like I was watching, like, the reading the reading the watching of the Descendants. So then I was picturing them wearing, the, like, all the uniforms. Yeah. Like, my daughter and I watched Descendants, so that's what came to my mind, with all because they all have fun hair. Yeah. but then they're like crazy and then and then the names but it they kind of didn't talk about that again until the end basically when yeah. they met back up with people it was like a little weird so. but i feel like it wasn't so like like you kind of forgot about it as it went on yeah it was only like the first few chapters of being in the castle yeah. or whatever the royal chambers yeah or anything all right so just that and then also the only other thing i had issues with it's more like obviously towards the end but there were some questions i still have that i think should have been answered in the first mm, book interesting like um things that were harped on a lot i don't like it when they're not answered in that book like you know? what do you have an example because like i'm kind of curious yes. yeah yes, I, I, do, I do okay like well what? let me pull out my notebook no yeah. so it was just that they was harped on a lot where they're asking themselves, why does, like, Griffin's asking, why do I feel better when I'm around her? Like, how is she oh. almost healing my darkening? Which yeah. I obviously knew he was becoming a darken. That wasn't, I felt like that almost came across like we were oh supposed my God. to be surprised. That's we funny because I didn't see that coming. <laughs> really? I thought you were being sarcastic in the fable. <laughs> you really didn't see that I coming? I did not. I did not. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. weird. We'll see. There you go. Yeah. So, I, uh, so sometimes predictable, sometimes not. <laughs> yeah, other stuff was predictable, but yeah, that yeah. was one thing that wasn't predictable to me. Oh, I that's was like, so funny. Because the whole time I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? I thought that he <laughs> literally, like, I thought, because I, I was trying to figure it out if it was like a metaphor for his like emotional trauma, yeah. like manifesting, or like mm -hmm. if something was actually physically wrong with him. And mm. I think, I think what happened was I was overthinking it. And so yeah. I looked, I overlooked the easy answer. Mm. I think that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, that's kind of fun sometimes to do to yourself. Yeah, so that's great. Good. So I was, was like, I was like oh go. man, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then, so we find all that out and we find out he isn't, but then they, they just kind of, I know they didn't really have time to like divulge into that. But I also don't like at the end, which we'll talk about, but like how he kind of wanders off when he's mm. like, well, you have your mind. Like, why did he wander off? I didn't understand that. And then he comes back. I didn't understand that. I, so it's come some kind of like gray area stuff going on. And I'm like, well, I kind of feel like we should have known. I wish we would have found out why does she make him better? And then why did he leave when he went full? You know, when so she I makes him better. Like we kind of got the answer at the end, but like maybe not fully because we did okay. find out that from um, what's her name at the very end, the evil lady who I picture exactly the same as Maeve from Throne of Glass. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, totally. The Tempest. So we find out from yeah. the Tempest that they are in fact twin flames. Okay. Mm hmm. I don't, I must have zoned out that part. Yeah, so, okay. so we do find that out, but we don't know, <laughs> but we don't know what, what it that means. means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if that means faded mates like we are used to knowing. Right. Like, do, uh, does that mean twin flames and helping each other with their powers? Or does that mean romantically? Like, we don't really know what right. that means in this world. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then why she helped. That was the biggest thing to me is like so much of... Griffin's monologue was like, why? I need to be around her. I need to be around her. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm around her, it's better. But then we don't get to find out why it makes them better. So things yeah. like that, like I said, when they're really harped on, I want the answer in that book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah, Unless see, it's that, like finding a hidden lock, like obviously. Yeah, that didn't but. bother me. I was, I was okay mm -hmm. with that because I feel like we had enough information to where... 
I was satisfied going into book two. Like if we read book yeah. two and still didn't find out, I'd be like, no, yeah. this is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel like we have enough. Like if they just forgot about it. Yeah. Oh, the worst when there's <laughs> yeah, like something so that. important and no one talks about yeah. it. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Let's, so let's start at the beginning. <laughs> start at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So we meet Gray. She's an assassin who's sent to kill Griffin. Okay. By mm-hmm. her father. I just put she's a badass, but she fails to, um, like, she fails to actually kill Griffin, which was her, like, essentially one job that her father was like counting on her to do well not one she's had like multiple trials, the most but this important. was like the big yeah she knew she's she's effed if she doesn't kill him yeah basically and she's thwarted very easily <laughs> yeah because griffin stabs her in the thigh so obviously he's not trying to kill her he's just trying to immobilize her he stabs her in the thigh with a kinetic blade so the thing is we find out you know that like you were saying before we have the kinetics and we have the elementals we don't yet know where mm-hmm. they came from but we know that they're essentially like this feuding they're two feuding peoples mm-hmm. um and then each one has a weapon that will kill the other but not them so like if mm-hmm. She were to, like, a good way to describe it would be, like, if I'm a kinetic and then I got stabbed with a kinetic blade, theoretically, it shouldn't harm me. Yeah, they're kind of like how Faye can heal themselves, except, like, with the ash arrows or whatever. Yeah, Certain little elements can take them down easily. Yeah. Other than, like, beheading and stuff. So she's taken down by a blade that shouldn't Mm -hmm. affect her in that way. And that was, I wouldn't say I have an issue with it, but it was definitely something that was kind of funny how, like, throughout the whole book, like, basically, like, every hint in the world is, like, (laughs) Uh you aren't just a kinetic. You obviously have at least multiple powers. Yeah. And she's, like, that's weird. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. And just, like, doesn't really pick up on it. I was, like, that's kind of funny to me. Like, she wasn't annoying enough to where it bothered me. Yeah. But it was odd that, like, it took her so long. I mean, she didn't even figure it out. Like, Griffin had to explain yeah. it to her later on. He's like, man, I gave you all the hints. I stabbed you with a blade and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that happens. At the same time, we're, we're getting a lot of world building here in the beginning, which I really appreciated. We also didn't have to wait. We didn't have to wait that long for, like, the, mm-hmm. the vital, like, yeah. world building points, which I like. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes if, like, you know how I am. If they don't answer something that, like, it'll stick in my brain and it'll drive me insane until I figure it out. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we've got the kinetics versus the elementals. This is a Mm post-apocalyptic contemporary. It's contemporary, which I thought was really interesting. So we're on earth. Yeah. Or whatever the equivalent, you know, it's, we're basically on earth and so there's um, humans, there's humans, but there's only one quarter of the population left because Mm -hmm. they, okay. So I don't remember how many years prior it was, but basically there was um, an electromagnetic pulse that was so great that it took out three quarters of the human population. Since then, the quarter of the population that remains, human population that remains, ha- go is basically in hiding. They, like, live underground and kind of, yeah. like, you know, it's very, like... I don't know, like, futuristic, like, they want to stay as far away from the elementals and the kinetics as possible while this, essentially, war between them continues to be waged yeah. on the surface. So there's a political war going on. Yeah. So elementals and kinetics and are always war. there, and the, all the governments are helping them be in hiding. Yeah. And it basically is like, don't F with us, we won't F with you, like, ev- keep everybody cool. And then they take them out, and... Then we fi- we're finding out throughout the storyline that there may be the lie that what the story that everybody's been told isn't really what happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's Forrest, which is Gray's dad, who's the king of the kinetics that um, that orchestrated all of this to go down. Yeah. So and that's called depth. Dev- devolution devolution day, however you want to say it, um, mm-hmm. is when that EMP essentially like rocked to the earth and everything changed yeah. all the planes went down cars stopped working yeah. electricity went out yeah so i found that really interesting so this was a similarity with book of Azrael, is we're dealing with like essentially like a like an urban fantasy contemporary mm-hmm. situation however i felt like in this book you almost never really realize that that's what's happening until all of a sudden they'll be like oh and now we're in the state of georgia and you're like whoa yeah 
Like, that was weird. I kind of forgot altogether that we were even in the United States right now. That's so strange. Mm -hmm. Um, And it didn't really bother me. It was just kind of a little bit jarring from time to time to be reminded Mm -hmm. that, like, we were literally, like, this is taking place in the United States, like, post-apocalyptically. It was kind of... It made it easier for me. Mm -hmm. Like, we're a book of Azrael. I had to go, like, wait, okay. Because there were so many different realms involved then i'm just like uh, okay (laughs) yeah this one was very simple where it was like this is the realm we're dealing with it's earth it's in this reality and then later on you know we're dealing with arcadia which is essentially just like a another realm happening simultaneously Mm -hmm. in a different kind of universe dimension Dimension. or whatever Yeah, yeah yeah so we're finding all of this out while this is going on with you know her failing to kill griffin so mm-hmm. then the next major thing is that her father's like, let's throw you a birthday party. I'm going yeah. to try to kill you. <laughs> yeah, because you failed. So you're you, done. Yeah. You're not you, you're not useful to me. Tries to poison her. But her friends, luckily, she has a few, which they basically, it's so sad. Like, she basically is, you know, uh, made to be a pariah in her own royal family. So they help her to survive the poisoning and try to escape, but that all goes wrong because she has to go flip her dad off. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> okay, well, I set the trap, so... And they get her out. Meanwhile, Griffin was coming to try to take her anyways, right? Because he wanted to be close to her because he felt that, mm-hmm. like, weird... He felt that voice in his head dissipate anytime when he was around her when she tried to kill him. Yeah, yeah. I got the feeling that I don't think that he was going to, like, actually go in and bust her out. I got the feeling that, like, he was just there to help her. Like, she was going to escape and he was going to facilitate the escape. Like, yeah, was- well, like, yeah, I mean, now what we know by the end of it, I mean, someone was on the inside making, like, no, like, it was set up. And then during this time, we also get the flashback of mm-hmm. oh, them yeah. as kids, which I thought yeah. that was really, really interesting and cool, mm-hmm. like, to be able to see you know, like, their first encounter together yeah. as children when, you know, they merged their magic, essentially. And yeah. that's the when her father figured out that they, yeah. they were going to be more powerful than perhaps he had anticipated. Yeah. Which doesn't bode yeah. well for them moving forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Well, they're basically two experiments. So they're, yeah. you know, forcing... Griffin slash Chrome to come into his power early due to abuse and crazy horrible things. And then they're just keeping her under the impression that she's only a kinetic and just giving her basic skills and training. Not basic, but, you know, becoming an assassin. So keeping she her in know. the dark, though. Yeah, keeping her in the dark. So basically, let's see what happens with these two. But still abuse on an emotional level. Mm-hmm. So maybe not physical and emotional, but definitely emotional abuse. And... Yeah. Yeah, so sad. And also being told that that your dad is not your actual dad, being under the impression this whole time that he found you behind a dumpster with some dead yeah, yeah. Uh, kinetics and he's your step, he adopted you out of the goodness of his heart. But then he right. treats you like garbage. So that's great. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. So, okay, so Griffin helps her escape. She doesn't really know what's going on. She kind of is like, yeah. great, he's basically like, from her perspective, he's kidnapping her. From, yeah. the, from his perspective, he's helping her, right? <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. thought that they did a good job. Like, the author did a good mm-hmm. job of having us understand everything that was going on so that it didn't just feel like one stupid miscommunication. Like, yeah. Like, I felt like that was really good. So, you know, she kind of has this moment where she meets Dash. He kills yeah. him in Darkened. Um, and so she kind of sees, you know... I don't know. She gets like an insight into like that Mm -hmm. world a little bit more. And so she decides to play along and kind of just like go with the flow until she's quote unquote strong enough to be able to like kill Griffin still and then escape Mm -hmm. on her own behalf. But yeah, you know, she's got that internal dialogue kind of turmoil going on where she's obviously drawn to him and she doesn't really know why. Yeah. So you kind of already get that, um, Like, that sense, obviously, that there's going to be some sort of, like, deeper tether between them that's, like, not just a physical attraction. But we don't really know Oh, yeah. And, by the way, because of them living in the human world, they have to wear these special bands, depending on if they're kinetic or elemental, to suppress that magic. Mm -hmm. So she didn't know she was wearing a necklace that had the suppression stone, we'll call it, to suppress her elemental. So. 
that's why it's not like showing all of that stuff too because if they have like the what is it the sigils all over their arms uh -huh. too and yeah. everything to show what kind of magic they have so that's why they lived in the human world too because they are wearing the bands so they yeah. take them on and off depending where they are they can take them off to suppress their magic so they don't get discovered so that's something that is important in the magic system too, I think, to note how they're getting away yeah, with all of this stuff. Totally. Yeah. Like how they blend in. The one of the reasons why she hates him, aside from just the propaganda that she has heard, you know, from her oh dad. Oh my gosh, yeah. Is that <laughs> she has been told by her dad and basically everyone else that um, you know, Griffin was responsible for killing her previous boyfriend, Slade. Yeah. Slade? Slate. Oh yeah. So Griffin is it's supposed to be the son like of the royal side of the elemental so his dad's supposed to be the elemental king so mm. he's made out to be like the bad guy everybody thinks elementals are the bad ones allegedly yeah allegedly yeah yeah and so she thinks that he yeah killed her boyfriend and so she has like a personal vendetta against him mm -hmm. as well as like just a regular like i don't know what you would call it like societal vendetta of just like everyone like a rivalry yeah that the kinetics have against him yeah um so the next major thing is that they fight a big group of kinetics together. Yeah. When they're like on this journey. Um, and he explains that he's Chrome. So that's when yeah. we find out um, that I feel like he basically at this point, like he just gives her like all this crazy information. I appreciated the way that it was delivered because yeah. I felt like it was easy to understand. Mm -hmm. But he basically explains that the king plans to use them to open and destroy the portal or the veil between like the realms between yeah. Arcadia and, you know, whatever their realm is. Um, because he's been working with the Tempests. Mm -hmm who are essentially, like, a version, like, a more evolved, maybe, version of the Endarkened, or it's, like, some type of, like, the same dark magic. Some kind of, like, yeah, power-hungry people that he wants to join on in on that fun, I guess. <laughs> the yeah, force. But they have yeah. that, like, they have that, like, darkness, though. That's, okay, like, I gotta similar. say, I was a little worried for you that the Endarkened <laughs> things were gonna be a zombie apocalyptic thing when it came uh, up. and Because I, I like zombie stuff, but Liz doesn't usually. So I was like, oh no, eh, did I just get fine. her signed up for like a zombie apocalypse <laughs> story? I didn't mean to. <laughs> but it I wasn't dis too, I like... I dislike it enough It wasn't as like, zombie as I thought it was gonna be. So that's no, it really good isn't. for people that don't like that. It's not, it's not. But they yeah, kind of come across so, that in the description when Dash kills that one. I was like, I oh, mean, totally. this is a zombie this is a zombie book. I get it. No. Yeah. But it's no, not. that's exactly it's what it sounds like. But yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't like hyper focus on it. Like it's you like have very to, like you can't just, oh, like I got bit, like I'm a zombie now. You have to, to be in Darkened, you have to be depleted of your magic and then steal only, is only kinetics can do it or something? Only one side. No, elementals. Because that's why people think elementals are bad. Yeah. Because they can suck out the energy and aura of the either elementals or kinetics and then but if you yeah. do it three times then you become fully and darkened but even the first yes. time you start getting that craving and need for that excess power so that's the right. story on the darkened <laughs> yeah which i mean i thought that was cool too yeah I thought that was well done yeah so you know all we know is that yeah basically forest wants to open this portal mm -hmm. he needs both of them yeah to do it um, so that he can open this portal between Arcadia and their world for some reason. We're not really sure why he's working with the Tempest. He's trying to find, what did it say? He's trying to uncover something of great power. I'm yeah. doing air quotes. Um, but we don't know what that is at this point. Um, once the worlds merge, they will also steal all the magic and kill all the remaining humans. So that's another thing, um, is that basically Chrome is saying, if this veil is taken down, then it's not like it'll be two worlds that you can go back and forth yeah. between. It's like the actual like realm or whatever of Arcadia will merge with their world. So all the creatures will be there or whatever and kill all the humans and it'll just be like catastrophe. Yeah. Like, okay, I kind of thought about it to help paint the picture. I know you didn't really watch Stranger Things, but anybody out there who's watched it, kind of how the upside down is a darkened world because they're describing it when he goes later when Arcadia comes down as like a dark eerie depleted of life and joy kind of place and that's how the upside down is right upside down in Stranger mm -hmm. Things is a reflection of the actual world I don't know how similar oh. it is to that being like literally the same place but on a different um 
in in the different what's the word we just said it um like dimension dimension so same world different dimension different possibilities in time so i don't know if it's like that but that kind of like how it's like trying to come together like how the upside yeah. down and stranger things is coming with the real world like that like that i'm doing like a weird yeah, never- arm motion for those who aren't watching <laughs> so i feel like you know throughout this obviously you know they're getting to know each other better yeah. they're kind of you know slowly falling for each other um we find out at this point the backstory uh, with chrome's trauma mm-hmm. which was super sad and terrible oh there's um, this guy amethyst's husband which would be his stepdad um stepdad. grim or grimes which is perfect name <laughs> <laughs> I like how you turn him into Grimes. His name's Grimes. Yeah. But yeah, Grimes it's is fine. Perfect too. name for him. Cause I imagine like uh, you know, a creepy, kind of like that creepy guy yeah. in Ah, now I don't remember. I don't know. Anyways, just like black hair, kind of raveny, creepy crow guy. Yeah. Like whoa. <laughs> like that. The 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 theme of this episode is just crows. <laughs> it's just crows. We are now <laughs> a podcast about crows. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Well, one and all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's the difference between a raven and a crow? Yeah, the world will never know. The world will never know. Anyway, if you if you're a bird expert, let us know. know. I honestly have no idea. The people know. I don't know. I don't know know what the difference between a raven and a crow is. Um, Geographical differences. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. (laughs) Anyways, so to go. Have we ever seen a crow and a raven in the same room together? I don't know. Mm. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. <laughs> basically, we find out about that backstory um, and that, you know, he has he's basically slowly becoming in darkened. But I think that it was ne- it was like a good as we talked about briefly before, it was like a good metaphor for like his emotional, mm-hmm. like mental trauma, too, is that he noticed that when he's with, you know, Gray, it's it helps him. It's yeah. less. And so it was like a nice. I felt like it was a good balance between, like, you know, they weren't codependent. They weren't, like, you know, toxic for each other. But Mm -hmm. they were able to help each other, which I thought was really cool. And he didn't demand it of her. He wasn't needy. He was very, it was just, it was very well done. Yeah. Yeah, It wasn't like Sam Keel crying (laughs) and sad and, yeah, I just, I couldn't deal with that. Yeah, it's so funny how that was, like, a similar trope, and but it was done so much differently. And it's actually interesting because there's another book that I'm reading right now where there's a similar theme happening, and it's also done well. (laughs) So What book are you reading? I don't want to give it away because you're reading it, too. (laughs) Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. (laughs) I like how you said that, like, Rachel from Friends, because you're reading it, too. Okay. (laughs) Anyways. So they go back to the hollow. So that's like where Gray and all the elementals live. Oh, wait. Basically. And Grimes as his internal monologue is his darkened voice, too. Oh, so yeah, that's hard. Gr- Grim. Grim. Sorry. His name's not actually Grimes, but it's okay. We Who's Grimes? Grimes? Why do I keep calling him that? There is no one in this book no, named Grimes. No, but like in life, <laughs> Grimes and something. It's like a... I don't know. Like a movie or a show. I don't know. I think it sounds familiar, yeah. but yeah. There, it's In this book, the it's Grimes Grim, but Grimes, Grimes is okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, this is kind of like the quintessential part, I feel like, in every fantasy book where they go back to the place where she meets, you know, the equivalent of the inner circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved it. So, I loved it, too. She meets, um, you know, Onyx, Void, who who else? River, Ayala, I think is how you say her name. Mm -hmm. She meets all the really cool people that I really enjoyed um, their characters a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is where she figures out she's an air elemental. Mm Mm-hmm. They and they ease her so, into it because they don't know how she's going to respond or whatever. Yeah, and they train. They start training her. She's yeah. in training now. I she's gotta admit, I did skip, all of her powers. skip, uh, skip, skim read the training sessions. I did because <laughs> I can only take I so like, much. You know, I liked the training sessions because she was training. It was a little bit different she was training yeah. with void who teaches her how to use all of her other senses. No, no, because... yeah, that part, that part I read. But later on, when she's like training with everybody. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he like was cool. I really like his character. I really like his character, so too. So Void yeah. is, has been blinded at one point. I don't remember, like, some something that couldn't be reversed. And so he teaches them how to use all their other senses. So yeah. is a really deep, serious character, which is funny because everybody else is so lighthearted and silly. So it's a nice balance. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, he identifies basically the fact that King Forrest was intentionally keeping some of her senses dulled mm-hmm. at, so that she would have this, like, built-in weakness and not realize it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like basically you have no like awareness of your surroundings. Yeah. <laughs> like is what they figure out. He's like, you are way too dependent on your magic. Yeah. Um, and so we have to fix that. So and I she's that was always really on the cool. offense as opposed to having defenses built. So that's yeah, a big thing. Exactly. Yeah. So at this point, we also find out from Orion that basically, you know, she's the lost elemental princess because her mother was the queen. Yeah. So this is when this gets like he tells her that, um, which, you know, I mean, I feel like that was pretty predictable, like as far as like we knew she was the chosen one. In yeah. Some way, yeah, of course. Form. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, and then we kind of have like the like if this was a movie, this would be the montage, right? Where she's training. <laughs> yeah. She's falling in love with Chrome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like they have squabbles. Yeah. But then they're better. You yeah. know, she finds out. She's his trying to get over and- her first love, you know, so not opening her up yeah. herself up fully because it's only been a year and a half. So it's not like it's been 10 years been and I'm still long. obsessed with yeah. him. Like, well, it's, it's been a year and a half. It's still pretty soon. Well, and she's just digesting this information that he also didn't kill him. Yeah, that has to be. And now like, I'm falling in love with the person that I thought killed him. That has to be hard. Yeah, that I've been trying to hate my whole life, you know? Yeah. Um, so she starts, they're figuring out their connection. They're figuring out the bond. They're figuring out that their magic, like they can wield their magic together and Chrome can even to some extent control her magic at times. Mm -hmm. Um, which I thought that was really cool. His elemental power is earth, right? So it's like he can move stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, he's like Magneto basically. Yeah. Like he, yeah. So he's got all those powers and electromagnetic waves. Yeah. And I didn't realize that we didn't know that until later, which I love yeah. when they do that. <laughs> like, wait, I didn't even yeah. realize we didn't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. It was really well done. Um, so we also find out that Chrome um, killed his sister, right? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, so they forced through the torture and everything. They forced him to deplete his magic all the way down, his elemental magic. And... When that happens too much, then the first person they put in front of them, they will deplete their magic because they're so starved, you know? And so he accidentally, he couldn't stop. Once you start, once then you can't stop. So he loved his sister and he didn't want that. And they basically forced him and then like, oh, look what you did. I like what they yeah, put so towards sad. the end. They like, I think it was Grace's point of view. They say, basically, they made chrome into a weapon and then got mad at the weapon when it misfired like you know when it Mm, put it mm -hmm. on something because that's what they did they forced him to become this they made him do exactly what that and then they stuck his sister in front of him and we're like i can't believe he killed her like well horrible what what do you think yeah jeez so at this point we don't know because we know we that he basically it's like three strikes you're out yeah right so we know that he depleted his sister but we don't know what his second strike was. We just know that he only has one more before he becomes in Darkened. Yeah. And so, but again, you don't really realize that you're missing that information mm-hmm. until they explain it. Yeah. They gave us the clues, but <laughs> I didn't piece that together at all. I didn't um, think he killed his sister, but I did figure out at one point, I don't know when, I'm like, oh, he must be in Darkened. That has to be what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Oh, at the same time, Orion gives her the letter from her mother, yeah. but she doesn't open it. And we never, she never and did. I just figured that no. out a couple minutes ago, too. <laughs> I know. So that, Aww. so basically, what if there's she gets this letter. information in there? I hate that. She doesn't, I, I love that we don't know, <laughs> because that gives us something that we're going to find out in book two that's going to be really important. Yeah. Um. So she doesn't open it, because she's just not ready. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, starts making out with Chrome. Yep. Things things go where they go, <laughs> and she kind of forgets. She forgets about the letter. Well, because they in have to mo- go in into moment. action right there. Yeah, not not yeah. into sexy action, that was but the, into battling like, action. One of the scouts showing up, I think. I think that was before the the battle, right? Yeah, like one of yeah. the scouts shows up and is basically like, "There's been a breach in our wards." Yeah. But then, basically, long story short, the kinetics end up raiding the hollow, and then yeah. this pushes us into the final kind of sequence of events. Yeah. Well, yeah. because they just figured out they had what they ended up calling the fade, which is basically winnowing. Yeah. 
you Winnowing, know, so cool. Teleporting, so cool. Yeah. By them combining their magic together, they think maybe it sparked something because Orion, mm. oh, sorry, Orion, uh, Chrome was able to teleport to which guy, Onyx, I think, um, who yeah, was down, when he was, not doing was able well. to yeah. just think about being closer to him and suddenly turn to ash and then reappeared, materialized in front of him. So that was really cool. Super cool. And then she, so he f- helps Onyx by doing that. And then she, at one point, when she meets the guy on the side afterwards, one of the his name was Cardinal from the royalty and the kinetics. It was Scarlet's her, brother. Yeah, it's her friend's brother. He was still there, like trying to call her over, like, "Hey, hey, come here. I know where they are." So she ends up thinking about him. Well, she didn't mean to teleport, right? She was just thinking about going to them and being close to them and how to get close to them, thinking so hard and lost in what her decisions were that she started teleporting. And then she's like, tell yeah. Chrome where, like, where I'm going. Let's go. You know? So then <laughs> he, so they teleport to the Royal. I keep saying castle, but it's like essentially a high rise building that they remade into a yeah. fortress. So then they're there in the prison looking for her friends. Yep. Oh, and River's little brother died. That yeah, was sad. Yeah, that was sad. So they go to, as you say, you know, I called it a palace, but yeah, it's a high-rise building, whatever, because yeah. it is. Again, it's like you forget that yeah. this is contemporary, <laughs> but it is. Um, and so they both winnow there. So he ends up winnowing after her yeah. to meet her there. And basically all I put is uh, the final scene, the king is doing some crazy spell. Yeah. So it's like... yeah. <laughs> He's, like, trying to figure out how to, like, use them to, I don't know, like, open the realm or whatever. Like, well, he's trying the... to figure out, but that's how it looks to us. But he already knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, He's yeah, yeah, laid yeah. the he trap knows. down. They, he, you know, Chrome goes in there. They find their friends. It's, it was a horrible scene, but, you know, it was empowering, that part. Not empowering, mm-hmm. impactful. Grime, Grim, golly, Grim comes... <laughs> chrome kills him in a very satisfying you know way yeah but revenge it, and then yeah. and then amethyst comes and then they got her surrounded that was a though that was a whole it was a it was one of those scenes that's very chaotic but you still know what's going on <laughs> so yeah that was good yeah lots of revenge killing but yeah. it was it was like it was satisfying. Yeah. Because it, these people were really bad. Yeah. <laughs> they had it coming. And I'm so glad are- he didn't fall because she's like, I loved you, son. I never wanted any of this. And he's like, <sighs> I was like, you better not Dead. turn on yourself here. Like, don't fall yeah. for her. She's so evil. So while they're fighting, yeah, Grim mm. and Amethyst, then, you know, the king's over there conjuring yeah. his little spells, whatever. <laughs> Um, and basically by the time they get around to him, he's like, you're too late. Yeah. I've already done whatever I was going to do yeah. over here. <laughs> and so, um. And made like a veil it, of protection for himself too. Yeah. And in all of this chaos, we find out, I think the king tells, yeah. uh, Gray that Chrome was the cause of the electro- electromagnetic yeah. pulse that took out everyone. Yeah. Um, so he was basically like- left with a choice of like, what was it? It's something that made sense. Like either everybody was going to die or he could s- essentially spare. Cause he, he, Oh, Forrest was planning on doing something that was going to wipe out everybody. I think. So he decided to make a choice to wipe out two thirds instead. Something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the details yeah. about that part. Yeah. But either way, he did it. I did appreciate that when Gray found out that Chrome was the cause of this, she didn't turn on him. Yeah. Because I feel like, I was like, great, she's going to be mad at him. Yeah. It's going to be some stupid thing where they're going to, she's going to turn on him in the 11th hour. Yeah. And they're going to be like enemies again going into book two. Right? Yeah. I was like, dang. But that didn't happen. No. I was like, look at you and your emotional intelligence understanding that he had no choice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For sure. So they find this out and um, basically Forrest ends up stabbing her in the back, in the spine. Well, she tries to take him down herself. Yeah. It it didn't work. (laughs) Dumb choice. Uh, She gets stabbed. She's down for the count. Yeah. Essentially, Chrome saves her. He ends up finding an anecdote somewhere. Yeah. Well, first he depletes himself one last time with Amethyst. 
Right. So mm -hmm. he is now... He knows what he's doing. fully in darken because he needed all that power. And then mm -hmm. gets the antidote to her once she's taking care of Amethyst because Forrest is busy working in the kitchen. <laughs> and... <laughs> oof! And that was also on purpose. That was Forrest's final, like, piece was for him to come become fully darkened. Okay, so yeah, he gets turned into, like, an infernal, which is basically, like, a fancy version of an darkened, but they don't... <laughs> but they don't die. But they don't the die. The society of those Yeah, exactly, darkened. exactly. Let's bring this all the way back to the beginning here. Yeah. Make um, a full circle. Which means, though, that he's not gonna, like, waste away and die. Like, we don't really yeah. know what that means if he's, like, uh, you know, immortal now. Like, we don't really know what it means, but... Well, he's like, you should be happy, like, you aren't gonna lose your mind now. Yeah. Like, your full mind. Basically, you look like when we see the empire and the empire strikes back the emperor <laughs> whatever like oh, he's God. all creepy and veiny and gross and it's like a thousand years old looking but you're not but like but he'll have his mind great yeah and we kind of Can't find wait. out a little bit more at the very end like what that means um yeah but yeah so at this point he's like i don't want to say that he gave up but he's kind of giving up because he's like we've been yeah. like beaten basically by forrest what are we gonna do and it was his goal all along he said too before like he wanted to just kill him and then move on and yeah. die yeah like whatever so but gray she's able to bypass the wards on their magic by traveling down you know their bond basically and using both of their powers simultaneously mm -hmm. which i thought was cool um and so they see. so she they, like explode well she's able right? to free him enough for him to give her the anecdote yeah then she is like free too and then he explodes chrome yeah explodes everything like, had her protect herself with her magic yeah explodes everything for like they essentially say it's almost like an atomic bomb yeah like, like everything explode everything for miles is just yeah flatten he said flat. it made a new a new plane because they were underground. So now that underground is now the ground, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Really could see it's good descriptions and stuff. Very well done. Yeah. And then Chrome just kind of like wanders off into the, into wherever yeah. he goes. See that part I had an issue with. Like, yeah, like, why? I mean, I guess maybe he's not fully there. Maybe he's just like, okay, I gotta go wander now. But or like, maybe he said he, but Forrest told him, like, well, you have your mind now. You but know? maybe he's thinking, like, he's doing it to protect her because he doesn't know what yeah. he's capable of. If he's of gonna thing. turn her yeah. on. Yeah, true, true, true. That's fair. So he wanders off. Meanwhile, we're thinking that Forrest is dead because everyone just got obliterated yeah. nope he's still alive of course he's not yeah he yeah. had the protection thing on him <laughs> so this kind of annoyed, i will say this kind of annoyed me because i'm thinking great gray's gonna finally kill him and she yeah. doesn't no <laughs> she doesn't she gets saved at on the 11th hour mm -hmm. by who else other than her actual alive dead boyfriend yeah slate yeah. Which I saw that coming from a mile away. I knew that he was going to be alive. I just didn't know yeah. how important he would be to the story at this point. Yeah. So she's basically like, you know, again on death's door and yeah. he swoops in and saves her. The king gets away. He just kind of like runs yeah. away. He's so he got off easy again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's like, what? Like, you're alive? And basically, that's how that part of the story ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, we find out that obviously Chrome has been working with and knows that Slate's been alive. He's been using him as his informant this whole time. Yeah. And actually sent her in to be friends with her because he didn't want her being, like, falling into a pit of despair. Yeah. And they accidentally fell in love. Exactly. So... That had to have been hard because meanwhile, he can feel all the things when he's close enough mm -hmm. to her, like whatever distance away, he can feel all her emotions. So he knows she's falling in love with him and everything. Mm -hmm. And he already loves her. Oh, so sad. So yeah. hard. So Ooh. he's alive. We don't really know, like, you know, if we don't know anything about Slate at this point. Like, is well, he, yeah, we just, yeah. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Did he, like, you know, obviously he was okay faking his own death and then letting her mourn him. So she's kind of pissed about that. But we don't really know the inner workings of that whole situation yet at this point. So then we switch over to the other point of view 
which is Chrome's mm-hmm. point of view, he's now getting basically like drawn to the darkness. Yeah. Like we get this really cool like imagery. I almost like picture of him going into like the creepy, dark, dank woods. Oh. He goes in there where he meets the Tempest that the mm-hmm. king was talking about, who I picture as Maeve, <laughs> who's basically yeah. like giving him the backstory like, hey, there used to be just one race of people or one race of, I don't know, magical beings called the Celestials. I was mm-hmm. the one who separated y'all into two groups of elementals and kinetics, and now you fight with each other because I cast you out of Arcadia for basically, yeah. like, what? Not letting her have world domination? Is that, like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, turning against her. Yeah. Yeah. And she kind of seems like she's, you know, the typical fantasy villain whose main objective yeah. is to just take over everything. Yeah. Yeah. Total, yep. total world domination. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Because of the fact that he and Gray are both, uh, both elementals and kinetics, he's her first, as she calls him, reborn child in a millennium. So she's been waiting yeah. for this to occur so that he can help her achieve these ends. Yeah. Um, and eventually she does say that Gray will also become darkened um, because mm-hmm. of the Bond connection. And she said that she will go mad because of it. So, so, so yeah, yeah, that's ending. I feel like it ended obviously on a cliffhanger. There's unexplained things, but I feel like it was done in a way that didn't upset me. Like, I feel content and good about it. I'm just excited to read book two. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any more connections that you wanted to make between that and Book of Azrael? Like, any more similarities that you wanted well, to address? Well, we talked about the, you know, healing each other kind of situation. Yeah. I liked this was done better. Yeah. Um, the different worlds and realms, kind of almost like that sci-fi vibe. Uh-huh. This was, I like the way this was done better. What else was that? The Celestials. When I read that, I was like, oh my gosh. And the Celestials. <laughs> there yeah. Celestials in Book of Azrael. They both were strong characters, FMC and MMC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But done differently where they they didn't like you said they weren't toxic together they didn't need each other in that right. way like they didn't they were both powerful in their own way yeah and they stayed that, that way yeah. and if anything they got better together but they didn't need it you know what i mean yeah that- whereas book of azrael <laughs> was done very differently in our opinion <laughs> well yeah you felt like so, when they got together they got like weaker and kind of like a little stupid yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so the opposite happened. It, the, every time that he said Oblivion, it kind of threw me off because that's what the blade is called in Book of Azrael, oh, the Oblivion blade. yeah, yeah. That's funny. He's like, she's my Oblivion. And I'm like, stop saying that. <laughs> that's funny. You keep saying that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, no, lots of similarities for sure. I feel like the most similar thing like that stood out to me was the fact that they were both you know, that contemporary, like, urban fantasy kind of vibe. Um, But I wasn't pulled out of the story as much with A Touch of Golden Madness as I was with Book of Azrael because of that. Okay, so I feel like, I mean, we took a deep dive. I hope you guys uh, liked it. Appreciate it. And why don't... stuck around. Yeah, exactly. And why don't we uh, sum it up, sum it up, finish it up, end it, end it. (laughs) With a... (laughs) Just end it all. Just end it all. With a smash or pass. (laughs) Ashley... Smash or pass. Liz. Okay. Cassian. <laughs> I was waiting for like some kind of asterisk, some nope. caveat. Nope. I literally was thinking about it because I'm rereading Akatar, you know, and I'm getting ready to get to, you know, Court of Silver Flames, which is my favorite book. And it just dawned on me. I was like, I feel like Cassian is not your type at all. Like, but at the yeah. same time, I was curious. I was like, I'm curious. I must know. Mm. Yeah, whilst he's not my first choice, I um, have people yelling at me right now. <laughs> I um, mean, not really. Reese for a good your- time, call 1-800-Cassian. <laughs> Smash. You know why? He's a bat boy, like you said. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's it's sometimes it's just a fun time. And that's what you got to go with, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was curious because he's yeah. definitely, you know, he's he doesn't have a lot of if any of the qualities of your favorite book boyfriends. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's totally. basically the polar opposite of Rhysand yeah. yeah. or, or Vale. And so I was like, hmm, I have to know. The people need to yeah. know. We need to know. Yeah. He can't be serious all the time. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a lovable goofball. He's a lovable but goofball. 
He can yeah. he can be he can have he has a serious moments. Oh, I mean he's still a feared warrior. Yeah. So it's a good balance. <laughs> it's a good balance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Let's get real. Well, now that we cleared that up because it's been bothering me truthfully for oh, a while. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> truthfully, I've, it's been keeping me up at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Liz? <laughs> You're like, oh, pass. <laughs> pass on Cassian. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Imagine. Obvious, um, obviously, so that's a smash. Obviously, you know we said about Maximus that everybody would say yes. Well, that's so weird. Twenty percent, something like that, said yes. So what if Cassian surprises us? I feel like maybe there might have been a misunderstanding. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> if it's if it's okay, you have to say. If you were a if horse. I, yeah. Of course. Or else it makes it weird if you're yeah. thinking anything else. It's if if you you're guys. a turtle, <laughs> if you're a horse. Like, if, like, you know, there you have to be the same species being as. Yeah. Yeah. A I'll lot, put a, that next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the pulse. I think that needs to be said. And it's also, like, the energy and the vibes. Like, do you, you yeah. know? Yeah. Can you get I down feel with like, that? I feel like energy? the only time you don't have to be the same species is if we're talking, like, you know, quote, unquote, mom monster romance or like paranormal romance or whatever yeah. where you know yeah. obviously we're dealing with fae vampires you know etc then that's fine we'll, we'll put a uh to the polls next time next week if i remember i'll put it to say okay now let's try this one again yeah. if, <laughs> if you, you were a horse, horse. <laughs> well i don't know if your theory works because i swear everybody was saying yes to ninja turtles but <laughs> They're kind of a gray area because they walk around and they're they talk. kind of like so. people, they're like a person turtle hybrid, which is really yeah, weird. Like when you romance, think, yeah, kind of but adjacent. Turtle. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and this just goes to show that it's a, it is it's a gray area what people are yeah. what we're okay with and what we're not okay with. Because <laughs> none of this is real. That's what's hilarious to me. Like <laughs> never right. ending story. <laughs> Falcor. If I was a dragon? If you were a furry dragon, Falcor. Smash, 100%. <laughs> we're going to have to asterisk it every time. Yeah. If you were a furry dragon in the never-ending story, smash your pass or just a, Or just a dragon in general, you know? Or just a dragon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, he bet he's so soft. Yeah, so soft. And he's so nice. Like, he's so, so nice. sweet. And wise. Yeah. 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 I don't know. For I sure. might pass, though. Why? Mm. Because he's like a wise old dragon. Yeah. Like the Gandalf of dragons. He's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd, like you'd want to be his buddy. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow, comment, all the things. Anywhere you love yes. to listen to your favorite podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I know that this is a well-known book, but let us know if we've inspired you to pick it up and listen or read it, I should say. Either. Read it. Yeah. And um, yeah, find us on Instagram so you can vote in these polls at mm. Besties in the Books Podcast. Yes. Ah. <sighs> All right. Well, thanks, We're guys. We're done here. We're done. Thank Goodbye. you so much. Good night. <laughs> Goodbye and good night. <laughs> Goodbye and good night. We'll see you tomorrow. next Tuesday with the crows. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>